everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. As often happens on this show, actually more often than not, a guest is referred by a previous guest, and today's guest was highly recommended by none other than our dear friend, Dr. Hans Diel, who has been on the show many times. He has a wonderful, inspiring story, which he calls From Shamu to Sardine, of losing 75 pounds using the principles that we teach on this show, a whole food plant-based diet. Please welcome from Loma Linda, California, Terrence Tay. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It is my pleasure. Well, I watched your presentation, and so I know all about it, but I don't know if our audience is familiar with it. So please tell us your wonderful story. Well, uh, there's one particular day, August 16, 2016. It changed my life totally. Uh, and I used the term to let the public know what's the change in my life. And I called it Shamu to Sardine. Uh, I was very obese before, before 2016. And the interesting part is that I work in the laboratory in a hospital. I should know better all my numbers. My, I, I have a bad total cholesterol numbers. It was total cholesterol is about 243. And my LDL is about one, uh, 210. And I weigh 232 pounds and I'm not doing anything. I just go along as happy as, 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 I, as I can be, uh, but nobody tell me that I'm obese. Well, I knew I need to do something, but nobody tells me that. So on that particular day, August 16, 2016, while I was hiking up on the hill in Loma Linda, I do that every morning at 5 a.m. At that particular morning at 6.30 a.m., when I was coming down from the hill, I was walking with my wife and I suddenly feel very tired. I couldn't walk another couple of steps. My wife is a registered nurse. She works in ICU, CCU. And when she looked at me, she says, you have a heart attack. I said, there's no way. I don't feel the pain. I, don't, I, I feel nothing wrong with me. All I had was I couldn't walk. And then a few minutes later, another friend of mine passed by me. He's a doctor. And he said, sure, you have a heart attack. So he called 911. The, the paramedic came. They evaluated me. They said, yep, you have a heart attack. They sent me to ER. And they confirmed it. Then they went and sent me to the cath lab. They put a stent in. One of, one of my arteries, 99% block. Wow, 99%. That's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. So with, with that stand I put in, I was sent to my room. So I got time to think about what I did wrong, what kind of mess I'm getting in. So I was in the hospital for three days. <coughs> After the third days, I was discharged, went home. I told my wife, I'm going to be a vegetarian from today onward. And I did. But I had no idea where to go and how to start, what to do. I have no idea, but somebody came to me and showed me how, how it's supposed to be done. Who was that person? That person is actually a good friend of mine. He's Dr. Henry Chai. He used to hike with me every morning. Uh, but interesting that every, every morning when we hike, we start together, but we never cross our path coming back. But that particular morning, 2000s, uh, August 16, 2016, he happened to pass by me. And that is a miracle. And he came to my house. He brought his brother. His brother also is also a doctor. And that's the first time I heard the word whole food plant-based diet. I have no clue what is all, what is that all about. So they educate me. Wow. So that really was the first time in your life you heard about it. That's incredible. All I heard is vegetarians and vegans, but what is whole food plant-based plant -based diet? But the night before, I knew I need to change my lifestyle, but I don't know what to do, how to do. So that Friday night, I was not able to sleep. So I was doing the TV surfing. I was surfing the channel. And I, I, I came to the station called PBS and 
who's on that station? It was Dr. Joe Furman. And Dr. Joe Furman was promoting, promoting his book, this book here, How to End the Heart Disease. I think, wow, what a timing, you know, it just came right for me, just for me to, and so I called the 800 number, ordered the book, and when I got a book, it opened my eye, opened my eyes, there's a whole new world of eating. It's amazing. That is fantastic. Now, Terrence, sometimes people join this live broadcast a little late, so could you please say again, if you don't mind, when you started your journey before your heart attack, how old were you, what did you weigh, what was your cholesterol, and maybe even show a picture. Okay, uh, before, now, before 2016, I'm an obese person, which I don't even realize that I was obese. And I weigh 232 pounds. My waist is 44 inches. And uh, my BMI is 35.2. That is really obese. Let me show you a picture. Of, uh, let me show you a picture of me here. You can see that I'm a shamu on one side and then I'm a sardine on the other side. So I went on whole food plant-based diet and in 10 months, I lost 75 pounds. And when I was on whole food plant-based diet, losing weight is not on my mind. That did not come across. All I need to do is, I was searching for what's the cause of my heart attack and how I can prevent it from happening again. And when I start focusing on eating the way I'm eating, you know, I changed my lifestyle. And I myself, my wife and my family start seeing me melting away, melting away pound by pound. And it took 10, me 10 months to lose 75 pounds. It was amazing. It is amazing. Did your family join you on your journey? Uh, my wife did, okay. Uh, of course, my children, they, they still love to eat what they're eating, but that's okay. At least I'm trying to set an example. And uh, because I, I, I'm the one who cooks at home. Um, my, my wife don't cook very much. So when I cook for them, I have to cook the food that they like to eat. But then I cook my kind of food. Well, wait a minute. How old are your kids that you still have to make, cook the food they like to eat? They love my cooking. <laughs> they, they love, well, well my, 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 my son is uh, 42 and my daughter is about 37. And they both have their own children too. And every now and then they'll call me, hey, dad, can you cook my special food? And I, I'll cook for them. Wow. But wouldn't it be great if they got this information before they had a heart attack and you could influence your grandchildren? Correct, correct. And, and it's, that, that is what they do. They, they, every time when they, we go out to eat, they will observe what kind of food I'm ordering and how I eat, you know. And so I have to really change my whole outlook of eating. And the first time I heard that you should not use oil in your cooking. And so all the oil that I have is gone. And so I have beginning to learn how to cook without oil. That is amazing. I mean, there's a lot of things that I, that it opens my day. I was learning and I'm surprised that through my example, I was also able to help several of my friends to change the lifestyle of eating. Wow. Was it difficult at first learning to, to cook the food this way? And did you, did you take some time to, need to neuro adapt to enjoy it or did you like it right away you know it is it is difficult because i was not familiar the way how you cook without oil and a lot of things i need to learn and adjust uh beginning the journey for me is a bit difficult because i'm doing this by myself nobody is out there coaching me showing me how to do it but i have a strong determination not to have this uh, atherosclerosis coming back to me again once is enough you know and uh, and I did not tell you that also when I was on the table that they put a stand in me I was actually temporarily dead two times they have to jump start me and so that actually woke me up I said I'm not going to allow to have this happen to me again and so I just have to do anything I can to start reading all the books that I can learn 
In fact, I've, I've read almost 88 books on how to prevent and reverse heart diseases. And I got a book from Dr. Carl Assistin, Dr. Dean Onish, and, and with this knowledge that I have, I just go out and share with everybody. That's incredible. So you were, you were twice dead. What was that like? Do you remember the experience? Well, actually I don't, because what happened was when, when, when the stance procedure was done, the doctor asked me, do you feel anything? I said, no. And then they were asking me that, uh, were you aware of what's going on? I said, no. And then he, he made this comment and said, Mr. Tay, you are just one lucky man. And I asked him, what do you mean by that? And he said that we have to jumpstart you twice. And I didn't realize that until when I was in my, in my room around 2 p.m., he hits me on the head. That means I could have died that morning. And fortunately, I was safe. And my wife comes to visit me in the afternoon. I said to myself, wow, thank you. Thank you for you know, giving me a second chance in life. What would happen if I had been dead and I'm gone? If my wife come and visit me in the afternoon at 2 p.m., went to the nursing station and said, I'm here to visit Mr. Tay. And the nurse would tell her, I'm sorry, Mrs. Tay. Mr. Tay is no longer here with you. That would be very devastating. But I'm happy that I'm alive to share my story with you. Well, I am too, Terrence. And I'm wondering, you live in Loma Linda. So there's a lot of lifestyle medicine doctors. Have you since connected with any of them? And what has your previous doctor thought about your transformation? <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I live in Loma Linda, and Loma Linda is considered one of the blue zone. Okay, and prior to 2016, I've not heard of any lifestyle medicine department or lifestyle medicine institute or any doctors who have plant based diet. So when I got admitted, I got discharged. My cardiologist told me that I need to continue to take my medication and I can continue to eat what I want to eat. But I know that is not right. I, I need to really change. So what I did nowadays is that uh, when I choose my primary care doctor and also my cardiologist, I make sure these doctors are whole food plant-based diet doctors so they can understand what I'm going through and we will be speaking the same language. It's very important you know, to, to have same, uh, same thing in common. I, I agree. I completely agree. You know, Lori, who's watching live, says, did you publish or can you share your 88 book reading list? Oh, I, I, I do have. I, I mean, if you can get me the email, I will send it to you. Uh, of course, the, through, through, through reading the first book, this is the first book that saved my life by Dr. Joe Furman. And once you start reading the first book, there will be a lot of references. And then I get to, I get to read Dr. Carl assisting book. You know this book, and yeah, and uh, whoever is on 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 the Zoom and they're interested, uh, give me an email. I will send the list of uh, books that uh, to 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 that individual. And in fact, in fact, yesterday I just sent to a friend of mine. He was admitted in the hospital, and he has prepared his uh, pending triple bypass. So I recommend some of the books for him to read. And friends, we really need to educate ourselves. If we don't, there's nobody out there is going to help you. We, we, need to, we need to make sure we are educated and well-informed. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, you're, you're doing a life of service now so that what happened to you doesn't happen to other people, hopefully. Yeah, that's right. And, and I have the opportunity to go to places, to go to, uh, I travel through all uh, Southern California, Northern California. Uh, I went to Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, even to Manila, Philippines to share my story. Yeah, and uh, as long as I can share the story and one person life can be, can be changed, that will be very good accomplishment. I felt the satisfaction that I was able to help somebody. That's incredible. How did you connect with Dr. Hans Steel? Ah, oh, that's a very good question. Uh, when I was presenting my story in, in the church that I go to, and 
that time I heard of Dr. Hans Zub, but I don't really know how he looks like. And while I was giving my 15 minutes presentation, Dr. Hans Dill and his wife came in to the building. They sat down and they listened to my 15 minute presentation. And when it's over, he and the wife stood up and gave me a, a standing ovation. Now the Chinese people are not very, um, not, not very okay, enthusiastic to stand up to give an applause after somebody spoke. So then Dr. Dill came and talked to me. He says, you know, I'd like to invite you to share your story in another place. And that's how, you know, my, 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 my sharing gets, I get more invitation, I get to different places. It can be a community service uh, or an area, or it can be in schools, it can be in churches, and it just keeps spreading, spreading and spreading. Wow. And so it's been how many years now since you've been on this it's, path? Uh, four and a half years. It will be five years in August. In fact, I, I still have an appointment that it, because of the pandemic, I was not able to travel. In fact, last April, uh, last April, no, the, no, last April 2020, I was invited to go to Kenya, Africa, to do a seven days uh, health seminar and also my, my lifestyle stories. But because of the pandemic, that was temporary. We got you know, put on postponed and hopefully maybe next year, I should be able to go. And I have an invitation to go to uh, Maryland, Texas, Vancouver, Canada. And it's amazing, you know, people actually, people actually are hungry to know the, the, the right way of eating. Wow, How, what has the response been like? The responses is excellent. You know, my four and a half years experience of traveling and speaking to all these people, I was just amazed how many people I've spoken to. And I just told my wife two, 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 two weeks ago, I said, wow, do you know that I've spoken to 45,000 people? That's a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but some have wrote back to me and said, you know, nah, your, your testimony helps help them change their lifestyle. And there's a, one of my co-workers. I did not speak to her very much. All she did was she says, Terence, can I watch the way you eat? What kind of food you eat in the morning? What kind of food you eat in lunch? I said, okay, that's fine. That, 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 no problem. I said, the first thing I need you to do for me is to give me, to write me a journal of what you eat for the, for the last two weeks. And she did. And so for about eight months, she was watching the way I eat when I was during my break time, my lunch time. And guess what? In a year and a half, this lady that watching observed me without me talking too much, she lost 80 pounds. She changed her way of lifestyle, the way she eats into a whole food plant-based diet. That's amazing. That five letter words is, it, it, I mean, it changed people's outlook. It's amazing. That's incredible. So what, did, what were you eating before your heart attack and what are you eating now? <sighs> Oh, before, before my heart attack, my, my uh, famous food is fried chicken, hamburgers. And when my hamburgers that I, I ordered, I tell them, can you put one extra piece of tomato, extra piece of uh, lettuce? I told my wife, today I'm good. I'm a vegetarian. I got vegetables in there. I love French fries. I eat mostly all meat. There's not much vegetables on, on, my, on my plate. And even the Chinese cooking, when I cook my vegetables, it looks good. I'm cooking vegetables, but my vegetable has a lot of oil, you know, a lot of saturated oil. So the food that I'm eating is not healthy. And so when I was climbing up the hill, trying to lose weight, I lost only 25 pounds, but I couldn't go any further. So later on, I learned that it is the food that I'm putting in. Even I can walk and hike all the way I want, all the time I want. But if I'm not eating the right kind of food, my weight will never go down. So that's how I changed my lifestyle. But you told me before we logged on, you're Chinese and the Chinese people I know, they don't eat fried chicken and hamburgers, at least the ones that I know in China, they're eating yes. a healthy diet. Correct, correct. It is, when, it is when the Western diet get introduced into the Asian countries. The, I'm for originally from Singapore. And the first time when I, when I came to America in 1976, 
1973, I went to Japan to meet to 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 meet some uh, American students, and they introduced me to Uncle McDonald's and Uncle Sanders. And I have no idea who these people are. And when I went to Uncle Sanders and Uncle McDonald's, I said, "Wow, this is great food." And that's where I start putting on putting on you know, the weight. I always, I, every Friday, I must always have two cheeseburger. Every day, every Friday. And other than that, I have fried chicken. I, I love a lot of fried things. But today, no way. I stay back as far as I can. Where were you born, Terrence, and what were you raised eating? Um, I was born in Malaysia. I was raised in Singapore. And again, the the... I don't come from a very wealthy family. We, we eat very simple. And when I was growing up, the, 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 the weight I was during that time in the 60s and early 70s, I weigh about 150, 160. It is when I came to this country that introduced all this uh, standard American diet or standard, what I call standard Asian diet, uh, it's not eating all this fatty stuff, all this sugar stuff. I love to drink soda drinks, yeah, without knowing the sugar content. And that's what get me into trouble. And so I have learned not to go that route anymore. Right. So what kind of things do you eat now? Every morning, uh, after when I come back from my walk, I, I still walk every morning about three miles. I will come back eat my still still cut oatmeal. I, I make my still cut oatmeal every morning, and I will have strawberry, blueberries, flax seeds, bananas, and my oatmeal with no milk, just plain. That will be for my breakfast, and then in between breakfast and lunch, I will have my fruits if I want to eat anything snacks, and the only drink that I will drink is my glass of water. And I don't call this glass, I don't call this water, you know. When I go to a restaurant, I will, I will request the waiter, can you give me some sky juice? And they're wondering. So then during lunchtime, again, I will cook my vegetables with my brown rice. And I try to finish my dinner by 5.30 p.m. And again, I'll eat more vegetables and brown rice. That's my routine that I, I eat, you know. And of course, friends... Friends that you know, sometimes they bring food for me they, to eat. They are very conscientious. They are aware the kind of food that I eat. They will not. Eat, they will do air fry the banana or air fry this, air fry that for me. And they are well aware that of my lifestyle. And I appreciate all these friends of mine that really care for me and concern. And whatever food they bring me, they always tell me this one has no oil. This one is not deep fry, and these are good for you. Wow. I really appreciate the friendship. But are they eating that way themselves? <laughs> they, don't, they don't. And uh, but they they they're, they're trying. They they are trying. You know, every time when they see me, uh, they they will comment. Okay, we got to we got to watch out. Here comes our uh, food inspector. You know, uh, so whatever we eat, we will make sure that is uh, we must have a stamp of approval from him. It's called USDA TAY that I approved and then, so every time when we are potluck together, they, they, they bring, you know, the food that is approved by me and, I, and I, I keep reminding them when they see my face or among them, it's just gonna remind them, hey, go slow on what you're eating, you know, and try, try. And, and I do have friends, you know, they, they, make a, they make a big effort because the, the challenges that we have is that if you are not eating most of these people, what they're eating, uh, it can be a uh, challenge to you because it's, when they invite you to the house to eat, they normally serve meat. There's a lot of oil because the families are eating that. So what I do is I said, don't worry. You know, I will eat what I can is available. And also that uh, if I go to a place that I'm not familiar with, I got invited, I make sure I eat my meal first before I go. So I won't feel hungry. Wow, that's amazing. How, how many presentations have you given about your success? Oh, like I say, I've been to 45, 45 different locations. 
I would say I probably give more than about 60 or 70. And I'm still I'm still doing that today. And even sometimes I give a one-to-one -one presentation. If somebody call me, hey, you know, did this person have this issue? Can you talk to them? And I went and tell them my story. And then they start asking questions, you know, and, and that's how. So I, I do this almost every day. How are people finding out about you? Because I don't think you have a website or a no, social don't. media presence. I don't. I don't have a website. Uh, normally, they, you know, and I, you know, I, I love to talk, you know, I love to talk. Anytime somebody that walks on the street, and if I notice that this person, you know, is either overweight or obese, I will say hi to him. And then I ask, I ask him this question, why are you walking? Do you have a purpose for walking? He said, oh, yeah, I try to lose weight. Then I say, you, you, you want to know how you can eat a lot and lose weight? And that will catch the attention. How can I lose, eat a lot and lose weight? And then I start sharing with them my story. And then they say, okay, you know, I, I got another friend that needs to hear this. And that's how, it's true all through word of mouth. I, I don't publicize it, you know, and I do all this at my own time and my own money. Uh, I don't get any donation and uh, someone will provide me. Sometimes some people will give me some donation and, uh, once a year, I'll go down to Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, Hollywood Boulevard, I set up my own booth. It's called a Healthy healthy Road Lifestyle. I'll set up uh, all the brochures and all the books and share with the community, the public, you know, how to live longer and eat, he eat healthier. If, if an organization or a church or someone wanted you to speak, how would they find you? Oh, uh, normally the... I do have churches, people from churches contact me through, again, through friends. They say, okay, I want, I want Terrence to come and you know, share his story with us. I say, sure, let, let, let me contact with your organization, you know, who's the, the, the leader of the group or the pastor of the church. And we set a date, a time, and I'll be there. Like right now, I say I have another six appointments due to, due to pandemic. I was not able to travel. And once this is open, I will be in Texas. I will be in Maryland. I will be in uh, Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. Wow, that's amazing. Well, thank you for, for talking to our audience. You know, when we emailed each other, you actually shared, I don't know if it was just some slides or a PowerPoint presentation, but I was looking at it. And I don't know if you have the capability to do it, but those are some very nice photos. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I, I do have uh, my power. Yeah, sometimes people ask me for my presentation slides. I just email to them. And I told them there's no copyright. You know, if you have seen my presentation, you want to share with anyone else, feel free to use it because this information we need to get out. We, we need to do it at a grassroots, you know. Would you so, be able to share it? Because it's in the, the format I have now. I don't know if I can do screen share. I don't know if you have the capability because I think people might like to see those photos. If let me see. If there's a way you could do it and then I'll, I'll keep talking to okay. you while you're trying. We probably should have figured this out in advance, but I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah, you go ahead and uh, keep talking. Let me try and pull up my slides again. Absolutely. And uh, you know what I wanted to ask you as well is what is the largest audience you've spoken to so far in person? My largest audience in person is about 250. Nice. That was in, uh, that was in Manila, Philippines. And, and I did that just in time before the lockdown. I, I was in Philippines uh, on February... 2020. I just able to went in, spend there for seven days, get out. After I get out, two days later, the whole country was locked down. U.S. locked down. We cannot. So I, I was able to, you know, come back home uh, safe. Okay, let me see if I can share. You know, when I was reading your bio, Terrence, it said that you trained or or worked near me in Palm Springs. Yes, yes. I when I graduated as a Clinical lab scientist in Loma Linda University in 1980. And when I was looking for a job, I, I drove all the way to Palm Spring Desert Hospital. And I got a job right away. I worked there for six years in the microbiology department. And when I worked for six years, and then after that, I said, well, the drive is a bit challenging. And so there's an opening in Loma Linda University Medical Center. I came back here to work for the next 19 years. Wow. And I was in charge. I was in charge of the microbiology department. 
And after that, I say, well, it's time for me to slow down because I need to know my limitation. Today, currently, I'm 72 years old. I say I need to slow down and let the younger generation take all the headaches. And you know, I was in charge of the department for 19 years. So then I went to work in Wetlands Community Hospital for the next 15 years. Like I say, I work in the micro, uh, microbiology department. I do work with viruses, germs, bacteria, yeast. And because of my age, 70, I was 71 years old. And the department I was working, I was handling all those sample that has a positive, you might get coronavirus that's positive. So my, my boss told me, I said, he said uh, Mr. Tay, I think it's better for you to slow down and uh, take time, you know, to, to retire. And I saw the writing on the wall. I said, well, maybe that's true, you know, for me to step back and then relax. And uh, Well, you're serving your greater purpose now, so. Yes, yes, I, I did, I did, yeah. Where's uh, the farthest location you've ever spoken at? farthest away from where you live in Loma Linda? Uh, from Loma Linda, uh, as far as I go up to uh, Fremont, San Jose, Fremont. But area. no, you, you said you went, you spoke in, in the Philippines. That's even farther, right? Yeah, that out of country, Philippines. I've been to Singapore, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Bangkok, Thailand. And actually, if I were to, if Kenya in South Africa was open, that would be my furthest that's amazing. So some of these countries, I imagine English isn't their first language. So do you have a translator or an interpreter when you're giving your presentation? Uh, normally, normally, like once I, I got invited to go to Africa, uh, this lady that I get, we get connected to uh, uh, with me, she's from Ken Kenya. She's a nurse. And she told me she's going to go back to Kenya to do a health seminar. She wants me to, to bring me along and she's going to be my translator. That's fantastic. Do you anything any chance you're going to write a book on your story? I, I, I've been asked that uh, many times. Uh, maybe hope someday I'll like to write a little booklet, you know, something that's very simple, not too too big or too thick, you know, my story and then how I change. And hopefully, uh, I, I, right now I think is Dr. Hans Dill's uh, connection with me, and he has been exposing me to a lot of people. And hopefully, I'll find somebody that will sit down and, you know, write something for me. Right. Well, you know what? You've, writ you've read 88 books. I bet you could write a synopsis on all of them. I, I guess so. I guess so, yeah. And, and, and interesting is that these 88 books I, I read, they all sing the same song, you know? It's just like a big choir. They all sing the same song and we all think alike. And, and that's what I like. And that's why I like to read these kind of books where... I get my confidence and assurance that this whole food plant-based uh, diet author have the same goal in mind, to eat healthy, stay longer. And I always joke around with my friend. I say, well, if you stay in Loma Linda, Loma Linda is, is a blue zone. If you just stay in Loma Linda and breathe the air for five years, your, your life will be extended five years longer, automatically, just like that. Well, it's just so interesting because people that are watching live are commenting that you lived in Loma Linda, which is a blue zone, yet you hadn't yet been exposed to the whole food plant-based diet. I was so ignorant, you know? I was so ignorant. And that's why sometimes in information, we need to really search for it. And, and I have learned about, you know, we always hear this word, they say people say, knowledge is power. And I've come to realize knowledge itself is just information. And when you apply that information, then it becomes, it will transform your life. But if you can read all you want and you're not putting it to good use, it's no use. Okay? So then knowledge has to be applied. So it's the it, knowledge applied is actually power. Yes, correct. correct. And, and the question people ask me, why am I doing this? You know, you are in your early 70s. Why don't you travel? And I think the pandemic has opened me a little, a little niche for me to, to share my story because I strongly believe that what I'm sharing with you is to empower you to achieve optimal health through education, motiv motivation, and support. Nice. Well, people want. 
I, I don't get the opportunity. I was not given the opportunity before. So I have learned from all these 88 books. I'm going to share what I have in this little coconut here to share with you. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? People want that list, Terrence. So can they email you or how would they get that list from you? Yeah, they, they can email me, you know, they can email me or you can give them my phone number. They can text me and then give me the email. I, I'll uh, put that in the show notes. Do you have a preference of text or email? Which is your preference? Both. Both. Oh, okay, I'll put I'll, I'll, guys. Give me a, a moment, and I'll, I'll put them yeah. in for sure. Because, because if they were to send, if they were to send me an email, then I can send them my CV. You know, with all the little information. Okay, that's what I'll do. Rather than text, I will I will put yeah. the email right. in the show notes and in the in the live chat in just a moment. Well, eighty eight okay. books. You know, I think there's eighty eight piano keys, and it's almost like these are the eighty eight keys to health. Right. And and you know, I, I I was very thankful that my my service. The last four years did not go unnoticed. In the year 2019, I've been an alumni of Loma Linda University, the School of Allied Health, the Department of Clinical Lab Scientists gave me an award. And the award is 2019 Distinguished Alumnus Award, Alumnus award. And I really appreciate that someone even my little humble things that I do go out to share my story, somebody actually was watching over me. Nice. So as I said, sometimes people join live and Gina is asking, did you say what you used to eat before the cheeseburgers and the fried chicken, like maybe growing up, what your diet was before? Like I say, you know, all I know is, because we have this uh, uh, notion that we must get protein from meat, you know? And even today, when, when, when I give my presentation, people ask me, where do you get protein? And that's how I was brought up. Uh, my parents told me, you have to eat meat to get your proteins. You know, if you don't eat that, don't eat too much vegetables. Uh, in, in the country where I was growing up, vegetables are very expensive, fruits are very expensive. So we eat mostly chicken. You know, we, we can't afford to eat a lot of beef. That's so interesting that animal products would be cheaper than fruits and vegetables. Yeah, correct. Well, again, is that the, the reason is that because Singapore is a very small country. Singapore, if you if you know the, the, the size of the country, Singapore from east to west is only 25 miles. North to south is 16 miles. And we have 5 million people. So we are living in a high rise, you know, so... Space is very so there's no there's no much space to, to to grow vegetable. We get it from another country. That's why it's expensive. Wow, I did not know that. So how soon after your cardiac event that you changed your diet did your wife join you in eating this way? Because we find that a lot of people their spouses don't support them the way your wife did. Yeah, correct. Right after uh, I got my heart attack on Tuesday, I was discharged on Friday, and on Saturday, I start eating. Uh, a whole food plant-based diet. And I very appreciative of my wife. She's very supportive. She will go with me to, to the grocery store and always say, oh, you need to buy this vegetable to eat. You need to, eat. even today, uh, she will sometimes remind me, you're not eating enough vegetables. You know? uh, so, and, and it's very important that when you go through this lifestyle change, uh, your partner, your spouse must be supportive because a lot, if not, you'll be, having a difficult time traveling on this road. And then if they don't sync with you, it can be challenges because they want to eat one way, you want to eat another way. And so uh, fortunately, I was able to switch from my old habit of eating to the new habit. I did it cold turkey with no problem at all. I think that portion, I got the gene from my father because my father is a heavy smoker for 45 years. And when I told him that you better not smoke and he quit smoking immediately with no symptom, with no withdrawal, nothing. So that's a good gene that I got from him. Right. Well, do you think that the standard American diet is addictive, at least for some people? It is. It's very addictive, you know. Um, and I do give uh, talks about salt, sugar and fat. Uh, and that's what, that's what, you know, get us hooked to it. And we have to remember that the food that we eat is all about taste. Okay. Because the food 
the food that first enter our mouth, it goes through the tongue, and the tongue is where all the taste bud comes in. But after when it goes through behind your tongue, your body has no idea what you just put in, whether they are good or bad. If they are good, good. If they are bad, then you'll be in trouble. So now I have learned to be very selective. So when I go to the grocery store, at the beginning, when I used to go there with my wife, and my wife commented that, you know, the way you go to a grocery store now, like you're going to a library, reading books. What I'm actually doing is I'm reading the labels to, to check on the fat contents, to check on the sugar content. And also I'm reading the ingredients, what is in there. If the ingredients that I cannot even pronounce, that I cannot even read or understand, then I just stay away from it. I want to eat something that I know what I, I'm putting into my mouth. Wow. So what was it like going from eating virtually no vegetables to eating lots of vegetables? And I imagine you probably include a lot of leafy greens having read both Dr. Furman and Dr. Esselstyn's book. Yeah. You know, all the vegetables and all the fruits I'm eating now, Prior to 2016, I hate them. I don't like them. I, because the problem is that when I was growing up, we can't afford to buy fruits and vegetables. I thought it was very expensive. So I was not used to the taste. So when I came to the States, you have all those delicious fruits, but I'm not used to it. So I, you know, and so when this thing happened, and this book, Dr. Furman introduced that saved my life. He talks about G bombs, and I always remember the G bombs. Your green and all that. So I love all my vegetables. I love fruits that I don't love to eat before. Uh, I, I don't like blueberries. I don't like raspberry. Uh, I don't know why it's flax seeds. So, but today, I love them. Every one of them. Well, that's very inspiring because your taste can change and you didn't really make a dietary change until you were in your 60s. Uh, 68 years old. I made a change when I was 68. That's, ne that's never, so you're just proving, Terrence, it's never too late. And I think you're going to give a lot of people hope to think, well, right. you know, it's too late for me. Do you have any uh, symptoms of cardiac disease anymore? Do you still have to see a cardiologist? Are you on medication? How, how are you managing this? Uh, I, I manage my... Uh, myself through my blood test, make sure that I keep my cholesterol below 150, my area is low, uh, make sure my glucose is uh, below the, the, the norm. And I do have a primary care doctor and a cardiologist. And when I had my heart attack, I was discharged. I was on six medication. And I was on that six medication for two years. After that, I spoke to my cardiologist, spoke to my primary care doctor, and they're both plant-based diet, whole food plant-based diet doctors. They understood me, and they say, brother, you can actually give up your medication now. You do not need to eat your medication. Your medicine is your food, because you have been eating your food as your medicine. Nice. Uh, Verona wants to know, what is your cholesterol now? My cholesterol hovers around uh, 160, 160. Uh, according to what I heard Dr. Hans Dill says that if you want to have a general guideline, all you need to know what's your, what's your uh, optimal uh, cholesterol level is 100 plus your age. So I'm 72 plus 100, so 172 will be okay. But I just, I just don't want to be, I don't want to be okay. I want to be better than okay. And according to Dr. Elsestein's guideline, your total cholesterol must be below 150 and your LDL below 100. So you, I, that's what I'm trying to do. I try to achieve that because our body do produce cholesterol on its own and we do not need to intake any more cholesterol that's outside. And if we can do that, we will be in good shape. Nice. So I'm off, medic I'm off medication. That's fantastic. Were you able to share your slides? Did you figure out? Uh, um, no, I, I tried. I, I was concerned that if I 
push some more button, I might we might get disconnected. <laughs> I think the only button we'd get disconnected if you push leave. That would be the only or leave or end. Yeah. So, well, you know, if those are interested, you know, you can uh, write to me. I will send you all. Please, I will send you my presentation slides, and you can take your time, browse nice. to it, and we can get connected, and we can through personal Zoom, and I will share the story to you. And if you know anybody that's out there that wants to listen to my story, get me connected to them. Thank and you. I will be always available. Well, we, we still have some questions in the chat, if you don't mind. Gina wants oh. to know, do you sprout? Do you do any sprouting or eat sprouts? No, I don't actually plant my own vegetables. I, actually, I started doing it uh, because I have so many friends around me, you know, in Loma Linda, you know, it's a blue zone. So quite a number of the friends of mine, they plant their own vegetables. I get a lot of, I get a lot of vegetables from them. See, some of them they do sprouting, but I, I don't because uh, I, I enjoy planting cactus and plants that give me flowers and I can eat my breakfast behind and listening to the birds, you know, and be quiet and enjoy. That's what I Great. And Linda wants to know, do you eat any of the whole food fats like nuts, seeds, avocado or olives? Yeah. At the beginning, I don't eat. At the beginning, I don't eat nuts. I don't eat uh uh, avocados because I'm following Dr. L. uh recommendation. Yeah. He recommended that if you really want to reverse your artery that is blocked. Now, I did not tell you that actually I have two arteries that's blocked. One is 99% that's blocked. They all put a stand to open up. I have another one that is 80% that's blocked. And so I, according to Dr. L. Sistine's books, uh, 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 he recommended that people who have heart disease, if you want to clear your artery, you must avoid nuts and you must avoid avocados. And I say, why? Because when I read the books, and also there is a nutty professor, a Dr. Sabate, he's a PhD, and he did a lot of research in Loma Linda. And I spoke to him. He recommended that for people like me, I can still eat nuts but no more than a handful. You know, you maybe eat six or seven pieces, or you can have your nuts, almond nut, you chop it and put onto your um, your oatmeal or your salad. And uh, so, but if you're healthy, you know, you, you have no problem, you can eat all the nuts you want, but don't eat a whole can of nuts. Just eat just a handful while you're watching, your, you know. Yeah, yeah we, have, we have to watch nuts because they, they can, some nuts can have very high content of, saturated fat. Yeah, I've never been able to eat a handful, so I, I just avoid it, but that's fantastic. And your weight has stayed stable these last several years. Yes, my, my weight has been, I, I have maintained the weight, you know. Of course, nice. the last pandemic, I, I, last, uh, last year, the pandemic until this year, I noticed, I think I put on, put on a bit like six pounds, you know. Uh, what has happened is that when I went down to 157, a couple of my friends were a bit concerned. They thought, that uh, I have I've lost so much weight because of cancer. And, and the reason they, they, they said that is because, you see, I got no hair. They thought I have chemo, you know, but it's not that. They, they say, well, brother, you need to fatten yourself a little, little bit. So, so I said, don't worry. I said, you know, uh, I'm okay. So. Nice. Very good. So did you have any signs or symptoms of heart disease before your, your heart attack? Because they say in some people, 50% of the people, the first symptom is actually death. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're correct. Exactly. And like I say uh, earlier, but when I was, I've been hiking out of the hill for five and a half years. I start walking at five o'clock in the morning, 4.30, I'll be in the parking lot waiting for all my friends. And I have no sign, no symptom. I was running up the hill. And I was, I, of course, the only problem that I have, I was obese, 232 pounds, weighs 44 inches. But on that particular morning, again, I have no chest pain. I was not able to walk two or three more steps. I just had to sit down and rest. And my wife is, as I say, is a registered nurse, work in ICU, CCU for more than 40 years. She has seen a lot of cardiac patients. So she looked at me on my face right away. She said, you have a heart attack. So... That's it. What did it feel like? Was it was there pain, or did you even did you even know? I do not know. There's no pain, nothing. You know, I don't grab my chest this way. 
I said, I'm feel tired. I just need to sit down. So when I sat down, I was okay. Then I said, okay, I think I can go back to work. My wife said, you're no condition to go to work. So when I start walking again, two more steps, I feel tired. That is, that is the symptom or the sign that she pick it up right away. Wow. Um, we have a question. What is your favorite breakfast now? Your favorite warm breakfast, they're asking. As I say, my, my favorite breakfast is uh, usually oatmeal. You know, I, I've, made, I've never eaten oatmeal prior 2016. 2016. And I've never, oatmeal, I know you have raw oat, quick oats. I never heard of steel cut, steel cut oats, you know. So I begin to learn. I, I, what I'm trying to do is whatever I want to eat, I want to, to find the best, to achieve the best. Yeah. And so I'm beginning to, you know, uh, and I'm continue learning because I join a lot of groups and when I hear people say, oh, you know, make some recommendation, I say, I need to go and try that. But then the, the most uh, common question people ask me, when you go out and eat with your friends, are you tempted? Are you have this urge or temptation to eat, you know, all those fried food, those meat? I say, well, you know, I don't have the urge. I don't have the temptation. I always tell my friend, you go ahead and eat my share. Yeah. I will order what I want to eat. And even if I see something that is very oily, I will sometimes take even the vegetables. I will, I will request for a bowl of warm water. I will wash it. And wow. I, That's... I will wash it. Yeah. Or if I go to the restaurants uh, that I've been to, I know the waiter and the chef. I say, well, you know, I know sometimes when you cook your food, you use a lot of oil. I say, can you cook my special? Uh, if you, I ask them how many how many tablespoon oil you use. They say I use three tablespoon. I say if you can use no oil, I will really appreciate. But if you really need to use oil, can you for for my sake use half a teaspoon? I say that's what my my doctor my cardiologist recommend. I should not take more than that. And, and they 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 will they will bend backward because they want your business and they want you to go and tell your friends, hey, this place they they will cook the way you want. You know, I have a friend that owns a, a, a small restaurant in Vancouver, Vancouver, British Columbia. When I went and visit him, I taught him how to cook his food without oil. And it's amazing that he was able to do it. And I hope that uh, he will put that in his menu option that uh, either vegan or whole food plant people want to eat their food, he can cater that no oil cooking to their, uh, to their customers. Well, well, you could always do what Dr. Esselstyn says and say you're deathly allergic to even a single drop of oil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jesse wants to know, do, do you have a plant-based doctor now? Yeah. Uh, my primary care doctor is a plant-based doctor. In fact, he walks, he hikes with me every morning. Yeah. So uh, my first cardiology is not, you know, he, when, when I got discharged, he put on medication. And when I went and see him two weeks later with my new blood test results, my cholesterol was 230, uh, 232. He put me on Lipitor, 80 milligrams. In two weeks, it drops all the way to 80. My total cost 80. So when I went and see him, he said, well, you need to continue to take your cholesterol. We do not need to adjust. I said, why? I said, are you going to wipe me? My cholesterol becomes zero. He, he told me it's according to the book. This is a treatment standard practice. So immediately I say, well, I don't want to see him anymore. I went and searched for another friend of mine who is a cardiologist, who is a plant-based diet uh, physician. And he eventually dropped me off from that medication, Lipitor. Nice. Did you exercise before your heart attack? And do you exercise now? I do exercise before my heart attack. You know, my, 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 the only exercise I can do is walking. I used to play tennis and badminton. But when I reach the age of 60 and above, you know, we, we hear stories about the seniors are falling down, the hip fracture, ankle sprain. I say, well, I, I don't want to do strenuous exercise, walking. And I walk about three to five miles a day. That's fantastic. That is so great. Well, you are just so very, very inspiring. Well, uh, we, we, we need to get this message out because no one else is doing it. And we need to leave it to the grassroots. I share my story with you. You share the same story with someone else. We need to spread it on, you know, keep it, keep it, keep it. And, and I love to tell the story about called 
the starfish trower. You heard a starfish trower? Well, I do know, but tell the audience. It's a beautiful okay. story. When, 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 I walk, when I walk on this journey, I was alone. I was, you know, and I, I heard this story and I say, oh, this is a very interesting story. This story tells about a little boy. He was walking on the beach one morning and he saw all along the beach, beach, there was thousands and thousands of starfish. So what he did was he bent down, he picked up a starfish and he threw it into the ocean. And he did that one by one. And at a distance, there was, an, uh, there was a wise old man walking and he said, hmm, what is this young man doing? And he said, hey, young lad, what are you doing? The young boy says, sir, these starfish, they're lying on the beach and no one is helping them. If I don't help them, they will die. So the young man took the bend down, pick up another starfish and throw it into the ocean. And then the uh, elderly man said, young man, you're not going to make a difference to that starfish. So he stood down, he picked up another starfish, he threw it out in the ocean. He said, I make a difference to that one. And that's me. I'm going to the beach, throw the starfish by one by one. And through that story, I have two ladies following my footstep, helping me throwing starfish into the ocean. And these two ladies, they have their own group of uh, people that they meet uh, once a month through Zoom. And they have 67 people registered to visit the Zoom. And every month we have about like 35 to 40 people attendance. So I'm there coaching them. Dr. Hans do come on board to you know, share with them. And I was so happy to see I got two more starfish trower helping hey, me. Well, how can other people join your group? Well, the, I would, again, send me the email, send me, and I will link you to this meeting that we have uh, once a month. In fact, uh, we just had one meeting yesterday. yesterday. Uh, this Dr. Dr. John Tanner told his story about... He's been I, on the show, of course. Yeah, yeah, he, also, he, he also died and came back yeah, to life. All right, and his story, my story is almost quite similar. And uh, so next month, uh, next month, July, I will be sharing my testimony and the topic of the, 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 the presentation is you need an oil change. What does that mean? You that's a great, that's a great saying. I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Hey, so Lori wants to know if you'd be willing to share your experience in the hospital. How long were you hospitalized? How long were you in recovery out of work after your stent? And how much did the surgeries and medications cost? <laughs> okay. I was, I had my heart attack on Tuesday. I got discharged on Friday. So I only stayed stay there for three days. Okay. And then uh, the, 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 the medical costs, uh, the total, the ambulance ride plus all the stand they put in, it cost me about $18,000. Now, interesting. The ambulance, the ambulance ride, it's a five-minute ride from where they pick me up to the hospital. It's only a five-minute ride. It cost me one thousand eight hundred, and insurance did not cover that. I have to pay that out of my pocket. So I told my wife that a very, uh, very expensive Uber ride. Yeah. And, and also, and also, I learned that if you want a heart attack, please have it before before. Uh, please have it after seven a.m. Before. Be because before 7 a.m., they do charge you over time. So it's expensive. It's expensive. To... Now, I, I did not tell you one more, uh, one more if you allow me. Now, when, when I was on those six medications, when I was reading the, the side effect, because I'm always concerned about taking medication, and the side effect is GI bleeding, GI bleeding, GI bleeding, every one of them. And sure enough, I was on medication very faithfully. And one Saturday evening, I went to the church to listen to Dr. Joe Furman's presentation. After 6.30, his presentation was ended. I was walking from the church to the parking lot. I have to pass by the, the emergency room. And guess what happened? I fainted right in front of the emergency room. My wife and a, a friend of mine put me on a wheelchair, rushed me in there. 
and the ER nurses and doctor will try to check me out for my heart attack because they knew I have a heart attack, but they couldn't find what's wrong with me, why I fainted. So I was admitted in the hospital that, that night at a four o'clock in the morning, I have a, my, my, stomach, my stomach was so upset and I have a very explosive diarrhea. And that diarrhea, the stool was totally black, as black as my color. Right away they knew I have a GI problem. And where do I get that from my medication? Now, I have, when I had my heart attack, I was in the hospital for three days. When I had my GI bleed, I was in the hospital for eight days. I lost, my hemoglobin was from 14.4. It drops all the way down to 7.2. So they gave me three units of blood. So when I got discharged from my heart attack, I stayed at home. I did not have any uh, long stay you know, at home recovering myself. And uh, I, you know, my wife is a nurse. She took care of me, you know, walked with me originally because I was not able to walk fast. So uh, it's nice to have a, a nurse as a spouse that takes care of a patient. You know? Yeah, you, you're pretty lucky, aren't you? Yes. And, and we are pretty glad, lucky because we stay in Loma Linda. There are five hospitals. We are very, you know, all these hospitals are all close by. Yep. So that, just uh, 75 pounds in 10 months, that's, that's exceptional weight loss. Yep. And, and do you know, Put in perspective, okay. Do you know how much is 75 pounds? Some people they cannot figure out 75 pounds is actually you put in perspective, and I say that just think that I just delivered 12 and a half six pound babies. That is equal to 75 pounds. So any one of you want to adopt my these little babies, you can have it. I don't want it, I don't want them to come back to me. That's a lot of weight. And can you imagine I was carrying all this weight with me for so many years? I know that when I pick up a 10 pound bag of potatoes, it's hard to lug. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Jesse wants to know which medication caused the GI bleed? <sighs> Actually, all of them. I mean, uh, they, they all say, but there's no, there's no pinpoint, you know, because what happened is that the well, uh, they, 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 they did an endoscopy for me and then they saw an ulcer in my stomach is as big as my thumb. And then through the ulcer, they actually saw a little tiny vein, just a little faucet, in, you know, your, your water, it drips, 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 drips. And so they sealed it up at the same time. And, and I stopped, right after that, I stopped taking, I talked to my doctor, primary care doctor and my pathology, uh, I stopped taking that and I have no more for the last four years. No symptom. You know, it's amazing that uh, I think that, and that's the reason why I felt that I must get my message out to as many people as possible. And we have to do it on, on our level, grassroots. You know? Right. Well, thank you for doing it. And some would say you're a medical miracle, but I've seen results be this typical if people do what you did. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story, Terrence, and for the work you're doing to educate people on a better way to, to reach their full potential and overcome debilitating diseases that were caused by what they put in their mouth. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, great. Thank you so much. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Dos Joseph Sherber, and we're going to be talking about Parkinson's disease and what can be done through nutritional and lifestyle. Thanks again, Terrence. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thank you.